So we have some good news for anyone who's been following the Windows 11 saga, and specifically anyone who wanted to upgrade to Windows 11 when it comes out, but realized that their computer, for one reason or another, didn't meet the minimum requirements. For the most part, this had to do with the generation of the CPU. For example, with me, I had all the other requirements, but my CPU was apparently too old. It seemed kind of arbitrary. However, the big news is that Microsoft apparently made some statements to some news outlets, specifically like The Verge, stating that unofficially you will be able to upgrade to Windows 11 even if you are not on a supported CPU. You just have to manually install it using either the Windows 11 media creation tool or an ISO, which is not really a big deal. I mean, that's something you could easily acquire. So basically anyone who wants to upgrade should be able to. It's just you're not going to get an automatic update, which is something they should have just allowed from the beginning, it makes complete sense. If someone understands these supposed risks, they should be allowed to install it anyway. And people were trying to figure out how to get around it anyway, and now they won't have to. And apparently you won't even have to do a clean install. You will be able to do just a regular upgrade using the ISO or media creation tool from Windows 10 to Windows 11 without having to do a clean install. Now there's a couple things I should point out. First of all, this is not gonna be official or advertised by Microsoft in any way. Just some news articles said they talked to some representatives who said that the ISO installer will not stop you from doing this, but nowhere on Microsoft's website does say that you will have the ability to do this. Believe me, I looked, so it's gonna be really unofficial, not advertised. You'll just have to know that you can do it. However, apparently the ISO file or media creation tool will still check for other hardware requirements that are stated with Windows 11. For example, a minimum of 64 gigabytes of storage and at least a dual core CPU. Those aren't a big deal, but the third one is a TPM chip of some kind. And that's the one that a lot of people are kind of confused about because that is one that a lot of people might not have. Now, it's still not very clear whether or not the final Windows 11 version will actually require a TPM chip. There have been a couple articles that didn't say anything about TPM chip in their stated requirements that Microsoft said, whereas a couple others either said that, yes, it will require TPM 1.2, or they're not sure, but it kind of lines up that it probably will require at least TPM 1.2 because the Windows 11 Insider ISOs do require that, there's a hardware check. And also back when Microsoft originally had the compatibility page for Windows 11, you might not remember this, they removed it pretty quickly, but originally it had two different floors, they called it, for the requirements. One was a hard floor, one was a soft floor. So the soft floor was like the official requirements. It was TPM 2.0 and a 8th gen Intel or Zen 2 Plus processor from AMD. So the idea being, even if your computer didn't support these soft floor requirements, it could still be installed as long as you had the hard floor requirements, which are TPM 1.2, it had to have minimum, and there was no CPU generation requirement. So still, no matter what, apparently you probably will need TPM 1.2. This was a requirement even before they took down that page, the Windows 11 Insider require it, and you probably will need it for the final version. Now, I made a video relatively recently talking about how your computer probably actually does have a TPM chip, even though it might not say it when you run the PC Health Checker app. A lot of CPUs that are several years old even have a TPM module built into the CPU, but it's not enabled by default in the BIOS. So I go through in that video how to go through and look to see if your computer does have that and which ones probably do. And also, even if your CPU does not, if you custom built your computer, and even maybe if you didn't, a lot of motherboards may actually have a slot where you can go and buy a TPM chip and actually plug it into the motherboard. But you'll have to find out if you can potentially do that. I explained that all in the video, I'll have it pop out. So definitely check that out if you're not sure if your computer has a TPM chip or is capable of having one. Now, having heard this, you might be wondering, just like I did, Okay, so if you actually can install Windows 11 on older CPUs, why does Microsoft have this arbitrary, seemingly, requirement for certain generations of CPUs? It's really stupid. Well, it turns out there actually is a reason. Microsoft released a blog post basically talking about all the stuff that they implemented in Windows 11 that not every CPU has. And a couple of them have to do with DCH drivers, which are like a modern version of drivers that a lot of older hardware doesn't have, but newer hardware does have. And the other big thing has to do with a few different virtualization technologies, which are related to security, which basically at the heart of it, allow the computer and operating system to isolate certain data from other programs in the system. So it prevents malicious software from being able to inject into memory 
of core processes and stuff. And there's a feature in more modern CPUs called MBEC, which basically allows this to happen without a detriment to performance. Whereas on older CPUs, which just happen to be the CPU generations and older that are not supported by Windows 11, those older ones don't have this feature. And even though you technically can enable the memory isolation feature, it can reduce the CPU performance by like 40% or so. So finally, we find out the reason, which is Windows 11 kind of wants to heavily rely on this security feature that other older CPUs don't support. So they just said, all right, well, we're gonna support newer CPUs that do support it. Now, why Microsoft did not just come out and say this from the beginning, I have no idea. I think people would have been so much more understanding and less pissed off than what they did, which was just arbitrarily put out this CPU generation list, even though it was pretty clear that it ran on older computers, but they didn't explain why you needed newer ones. It was so stupid. Basically, they had the option of either telling people, hey, your CPU doesn't support an important security feature integral to Windows 11, so it's not supported, unfortunately. Or they could go with, hey, your CPU is just too old. Sorry. Hmm, I wonder which one they should go with. Which one would I do? Ah, you, let's do the second one. That's a great idea. Now, I'll probably have to make a separate video explaining in more detail the stuff that newer CPUs support mostly that the older ones doesn't. And that's the reason for this generation requirement and I'll go into more detail there, but that's just the basic explanation. So at least now though, we do know that even if your computer doesn't officially support it, if you do know you really wanna to get to Windows 11, you can choose to do it, although you might need to get that TPM module. However, apparently there are some ways you can even get around that, but it's a little bit more difficult. So at least it's not the end of the world. Now, again, if you guys wanna keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is definitely my TPM compatibility guide, basically, where I did go over how to figure out if your computer does have a TPM module after all, and how you can potentially get one or find out if your motherboard supports it, if not. So definitely check that out. You can click on that there. And if you guys want to subscribe, I make a couple new videos a week, so it should be worth it. So thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.